Okay, so this is the, the first in a long line of videos that if you watch the, the first video I put up here just a little while ago, um, you're, you're going to know that there's a lot coming, a lot coming down the pipe. But one of the big things that I want to get across, so this is going to be video number one, um, the big things that I want to get across is how, how to use these videos and more importantly what I've, I've learned about teaching and learning over the past more than a decade of doing this in a classroom setting. Uh, is, is people really don't know how to study. They don't know how to learn math. So before we even get to the first example, before we even get to any math at all, I want to do you the courtesy of explaining this because honestly, I, I don't think anybody actually explains to people what it takes to be successful in a math class, what it takes to, to, to learn, um, how to study for math. Math is different than a lot of other topics. It requires a lot. And if you're watching these videos, you probably know that uh, because sometimes teachers just, they just don't teach you how to learn. Um, so I'm gonna try to do that, at least give you some, some pointers. So if, you, if you're watching the video, you wanna learn math. No one's gonna go on YouTube and watch math videos for, well, I would, I'd probably watch it for fun. But not a lot of people just watch it for fun. So if that's you, <laughs> that's awesome. If you're trying to learn it, if you're trying to really get the grasp and, and understand what's going on with this stuff, Here's some ways to do that. If you are in a classroom and, and, and your, your teacher's giving you a lot, of, a lot of examples, if you're watching these videos, and I'm gonna give you some examples, take notes. Uh, write this stuff down, goodness sakes. It, no one's expected to learn this the first time through, get it in their head and memorize it perfectly. Almost nobody can do that. Um, so take lots of notes. As you're taking the notes, get this in your head you can do this. This is not beyond you, all right? If you have the prerequisites, if you've gone through uh, some math classes, even if you haven't, I'm gonna start beginning algebra here. I have pre-algebra for that. So if, if you're not up to par with that level, you can go back and, and learn it on these videos. Um, if you're in a math class and you have the prerequisites, you can do it. Don't let any teacher, I don't know who your teacher is, but don't let any teacher stand in front of you and make you believe that you're not able to do this. Um, you're worth it to put the time in. You are worth the, the experience of learning. You're worth the, the money that you're spending uh, to do this. You're worth your time. It's, it is worth it and you are worth it. So you can do it. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't learn this stuff. It's possible. You certainly can. Okay. So get a little bit of confidence in that. It's possible to do this. Um, some teachers, I don't know why it is, but uh, we act like we're up here and you're down here and we're just going to you condescend to you intelligence. It's not going to happen, okay? Um, if you have a teacher that's like that, I know they're out there. I'm going to apologize for, for that. I've done that from time to time, too. I'm not, I'm not above it, but uh, there's no room for that. So don't be afraid uh, to sit there and ask questions. So, so number one thing, take some good notes. Uh, number two, you, you can do it. Number three, if you're thinking that you're not doing it, if your teacher's not doing a great job, ask questions. Ask questions of the person standing in front of you teaching this stuff uh, to you because that's their job. Their job is to get from a textbook to your mind. If they're not doing that, ask them questions. So those are three big ones right there. Beyond the taking good notes, I'm going to give you some, some study tools, okay? So you've taken the notes, uh, you go home, you open up, you go, I don't remember any of this stuff. Uh, what the heck do I do now? Well, firstly, you do have some videos on this. Secondly, if you've taken good notes, and you can go back through those examples and you've asked questions on like, how did you get the step? Where did this come from? The first thing you do before you even start your homework, go through your notes, the examples that your teacher's given you, do those examples again. Do Follow the notes if you have to. Do step by step. Do it until you actually get it. Okay, do it until you can do it. Once you've done that, try your homework. Go through your homework. Do as much as you can. The stuff that you can't, don't worry about it yet, all right? Don't beat yourself up if you're spending time on a problem and you don't get it yet, okay? You're, you're learning. You're not expected to get it right away. It, it, it does take frustration to get it. Frustration is your mind's first attempt to cope with new information. So, yeah, it's going to be frustrating. That's to be expected. Anger? No. No, don't get angry with it. That puts up a filter, like an affective filter. You literally can't learn. It's like when you're in a conversation with somebody and you're having a discussion and then you start yelling and they start yelling. No one's actually listening anymore. Kind of the same thing in your mind when you get angry at a math problem. You're, you're literally defeating the purpose. You're not going to learn that stuff. So take a break, calm down, come back, start your homework, 
Again, go back to it. If you need your notes, pull your notes out. Use your notes. Now, here's the important part. So once you've taken good notes, you've understood that you can do this. You've asked some good questions to clarify the notes. That's a big deal, folks. You've got to get that. You've gone home. You've started your homework. You're through all the stuff that you can do. You've used your notes if you had to go through that. Here's the big one. Put your notes away and see if you can still do it. If you can, if you can do those problems without your notes right next to you, you've learned something. If it's the point where like, ah, oh, what's step one? Uh, step one, okay, I get that one. What's step two? I need step two, I need to do that one. And you go all the way through the list like that, not all the way through the steps, and you can use your notes every time that's a crutch. And what happens to a lot of people in my experience is that they get to a test and they go, I knew it, but my mind went blank. If that's you, what's happening is you're not internalizing this information. Um, you, you've seen it. You can perform it by following the recipe, okay? But you're not able to create it. Uh, and that's what we want to get to is that synthesis and evaluation, synthesis and evaluation level of understanding where you can actually do this stuff, not just regurgitation, but actually understanding. Uh, what, that, what it takes to get there is going through your, your homework, this practice, and actually putting in the work. Um, but not only just following someone else's work, you can't just expect your teacher to, to do it and you get it, of course you get it, they know what they're doing, most of them, um, and, and, and be able to get that in your head right away. You gotta practice this stuff. Practice though, well there's a way to practice, there's ways to not practice. Don't practice all the time by following someone else's work. That's a poor way of learning. It's possible, but it's not the best. Um, if you want to think about it this way, if you don't play a musical instrument, I play guitar and I sing. Um, if I ever want to memorize a song, I never do it by actually just reading the music over and over again. Because when, when I'm reading it, I'm not memorizing it. I'm not, I'm not internalizing it. Uh, to get it, I actually have to practice without looking at the music to, to really get it down. That's kind of the same thing with math. You need to be practicing without your notes all the time. So we've taken good notes, we know that we can do it, we ask some good questions, we practice our homework. If we need our notes, great, but we've put our notes away and we've done it on our own. That, I cannot stress to you how big that is. So you've done that. Now you get to the next section. And you go, okay, all right, I'm gonna start my, my new section. Well, keep this in mind. When you're in a, a classroom setting, like a, a math class setting, um, what's, what's happening there is, is that you're moving on. Right? Math, math is kind of like Legos. You get the foundation, you do the next level, so on and so forth. You get to the top. But we tend to forget about the first stuff. So if you're in a math class and you've spent four weeks between tests, usually it's like four to six weeks between a, a test, if you don't go back and refresh your memory on that first step that you've learned, four weeks later, do you really think that you're going to get it? I mean, it's that's not even reasonable. You can't be taught something one time, practice it one time, wait for six weeks and have perfect recollection. That's not going to happen. It's not feasible. So when you're going on to your next section, the one after that, create something like a spiral. So what I mean by that is if you're going to be on, let's say, section 5.5, you're in chapter 5 or whatever, you're going to be on section 5.5. Go back, spend 15 minutes, just look at 5.1. Just read through it, read through your notes, read through some examples. You don't even have to do anything with it. Just read it, keep it fresh in your mind. Spend, before you start any new section, spend 15 minutes looking at old stuff. I promise you, it will help you. Just getting that recollection back in your head, that repetition, that, I'm not talking about rote memorization here, please don't confuse that. Uh, what I'm talking about is getting yourself exposed to the material one more time. Uh, thinking through it one more time. But, oh yeah, I remember how to do that. Oh, factoring, right, that's what we do there. Because when we do that, we're hitting our hitting that, that in our head one more time. We're, we're internalizing that, that information. That's a big point. So don't forget to do that. So you, you've gone ahead, you've taken good notes, you've, you've asked questions, you, you've tried your homework, you've done it on your own, you're spiraling information, and then you get to your test. Here's how to study for your test. What you don't do. You don't just arbitrarily go back through your homework and do it all. That's ridiculous. If your teacher is a really nice guy or girl and giving you a study guide, they're, they're, they're helping you. Okay, They want you to be successful. If they've given you a study guide, here's how to use it. Put away everything that you have and try to do the questions on the study guide blank. 
with no notes in front of you. If your teacher allows you like a little note card, use your note card. That's fine, okay? That's okay. But try it without your notes and examples. See if you can do it. This is called directed studying. So if you can make it all the way through that study guide and you haven't looked at your notes, man, that what a confidence builder is that? That's awesome. Okay, great job. If not, well, now you have some specific areas that you need to study. That's a time saver. So let's say you know how to do problems one, three, four, and seven. Well, focus on two, focus on five and six, focus on those concepts. Yes, of course, look through one, two, five, and seven, or whatever I just said. Uh, look through that too, but spend the majority of the time on the stuff you're missing, not the stuff you have. So we're not spending equal time on these concepts that we know already, that's crazy. Okay, focus on the stuff that you're weak on. Um, so that those are some, some really good ways that you can study. The, the biggest takeaways from this are take good notes. Start those examples from your notes before your homework. You're gonna do better at your homework. Do your homework without your notes next to you if you can. That's a big deal. Try that, see if you can do that. Um, if you can, awesome. If you can't, practice that concept more. Some concepts are harder than others. After that, as we're practicing our homework, you're spiraling. So you're looking back at your first sections, you're getting that always, always repeating that, always getting that back in your head. Just 15 minutes before you start, 15 minutes a day. I know that's a lot, but just try that. It will, you, man, you'll succeed at it, for real. When you get to the test, you go and you do your study guide or you do uh, whatever, hopefully your teacher's giving you a study guide. If not, well, then you're gonna go back through your notes and your homework like you you're gonna have to. Um, but if you have yourself a study guide, a lot of teachers are doing that, go through it without any notes next to you. If you can do it awesome, if not, directed study. Go back to your read points and keep doing that until you can actually go through the whole thing, no notes. It's gonna take some time. But then again, man, you shouldn't be doing a study guide the day before your test. Come on. Um, start about a week ahead. So if you have a study guide that's given to you, start as soon as it is given to you, okay? As soon as you got that, get on it because that will give you time to kind of rehearse taking a test, to practice taking a test. Those are test taking skills right there. Um, that's the best I got, okay? That, that's, that's how I was able to, to make it through like my master's level math classes was with those techniques. Kept it fresh, I did pretty well at it, and I'm trying to pass it on to you because what I found is that no one's giving you this stuff. People are telling you that it's really hard and just study, but no one knows how to study. That right there is how you study. That's it. So um, keep that in mind as we're going through. So the, the, the tests that you're about to take in, in my class or whatever class you're in, they're not impossible. You can totally do it, but you're just going to have to put in the time and now you know where to place that time. Not just randomly in notes, not just in a textbook flying through it. Try, try what I've given you. If you've taken good notes, and, and you've practiced the homework without those notes, and you've done your study guide, um, and you, you've worked on your weak parts, I'm not telling you you're gonna get 100% every test, I don't know, hopefully you will, but they, they will seem a little bit more manageable for you. I hope that's helped. If you have any questions or anything, um, I'm gonna watch the comments on this video pretty religiously, so um, let me know and I'll, I'll try to respond on that. So, hope you guys are having a great day, and I will see you for the start of our real math lessons in just a little bit.